Hi, this is Matt Baker. A few weeks ago, I posted a video on this channel where I talked about five different DNA tests that I have taken. In that video, I mentioned that I'd also be doing a video on a different kind of DNA test, one that was designed for cats, not humans. Well, if you've been waiting for that video, today is the day. I happen to have three cats, and I received some free DNA test kits from a company called BasePaws for review purposes. So in this video, I'm first of all going to talk about the family tree of cat breeds, and then I'm going to share the results for my three cats, Milo, Quetzal, and Chuty. Let's start by taking a look at my evolution and classification of life chart, which, by the way, is available from usefulcharts.com. Everything that is orange on this chart is a mammal, but we're going to focus on just this one section here, on the mammalian order known as carnivora. This order includes carnivorous animals such as bears and raccoons, but perhaps the two most well-known families in this order are the canids and felids. Canids, of course, are dogs and their close relatives, whereas felids are cats, including big cats like lions and tigers. Let's now switch to the family tree of smaller cats, known as the Fellini subfamily. This subfamily includes the cheetah, lynx, leopard cat, serval, and African wildcat. It was from this last species that the domestic cat evolved, probably around 10,000 years ago. The scientific name for the domestic cat species is Felis catus, and it eventually evolved in three different directions. The western branch, the eastern branch, and the exotic branch. These, along with the Persian branch, which stemmed from the Western branch, are the four categories that Base Paws uses for classifying cat breeds. Unlike dog breeds, most people cannot name more than one or two cat breeds. For example, if you ask someone to name a type of cat, they'd probably use words like tabby or tortoise shell. But these are not breeds, these are types of fur patterns. What we're going to be looking at here. And what base paws looks at is breeds, not fur patterns. So let's start with the eastern branch. If there's one cat breed that almost everyone can name, it is the Siamese, which gets its name because it originated in Thailand, which used to be called Siam. These cats are distinctive because they have triangular faces, blue eyes, a long slender body, and something called point coloration, which means that they are mostly light colored except for their dark face, ears, legs, and tail. They are also one of the most talkative breeds. All of the rest of the eastern breeds are somehow closely related to the Siamese. There's the Burmese, which is kind of a close cousin. There's the Burman, which was created by crossing a Siamese with a Persian. The Oriental Shorthair, which was created by crossing a Siamese with an American Shorthair. And finally, the Peterbald, which was created by crossing an Oriental Shorthair with a hairless cat from Russia. The exotic branch is called exotic because these cats are the closest thing to the original wild version of Felis catus. In fact, the Egyptian Mao, which as its name suggests, originated in Egypt, is probably one of the oldest breeds still around. In more recent years, new breeds have been created by mating the Egyptian Mao with certain cat species that are truly wild. For example, Asian leopard cats are crossed with Maos to create Bengals, and servals are crossed with Maos to create savannas. These very fancy cat breeds go for thousands of dollars, and in some cases over $10,000. Finally, we have the Western branch. The oldest breed in this branch is the Abyssinian, which originated in Ethiopia, Abyssinia being an older name for that country. 
These cats always have a reddish brown coat and are very similar in bone structure to the mummified cats that have been found in Egypt. We then have the Russian blue, which, as you probably guessed, originated in Russia and has a bluish silver coat. Then we have the American short hair, the cat that, if you live in North America, you are probably the most familiar with. However, keep in mind that most American cats, as you'll see when you get to the DNA tests, are not pure American short hairs. Instead, they are a mix of short hairs and all the other various breeds we've looked at. It was from the Western branch that the long haired cat breeds evolved, the most famous being the Persian. However, there are several other long haired breeds, such as the Turkish Angora, Norwegian Forest Cat, and Maine Coon. Maine Coons are notable in that they are the largest of all the domestic cat breeds, weighing up to 20 pounds, even when they are not considered overweight. But despite their large size, they are actually one of the more gentler, friendlier breeds. Although the Ragdoll is even more gentle. Their breed originated from a mutation, probably in either a Turkish Angora or a Persian, the mutation causes them to go entirely limp when you pick them up. Okay, so although the Persians are considered a separate fourth category by base paws, from an evolutionary point of view, they are actually part of the Western branch. But since they are a unique category, I've colored them green to distinguish them. Interestingly, the most closely related breed to the long-haired Persian is actually the British Shorthair. One thing to note about all the breeds in the Persian category is that they tend to have more squashed faces as opposed to more well-defined noses. So for example, the exotic short hair, which was created by crossing a Persian with an American short hair, looks like an American short hair, except that it has a more round, flat face. Another member of this category is the Himalayan, which is a cross between a Persian and a Siamese. Basically, it looks like a Persian, but its coloring matches that of a Siamese. Finally, there's the very lovable looking Scottish Fold, yet another branch that is the result of a random mutation rather than a deliberate crossbreeding. In this case, the mutation causes these cats to have ears that are folded down like a puppy, which makes them extra special cute. Okay, so that was a look at some of the main cat breeds out there and how they are related to each other from an evolutionary point of view. There are other breeds that I haven't shown, but these are the ones that Base Paws tests for, so that's why I wanted to focus on them. Let me now introduce you to my three cats. The first is Milo, a short-haired orange tabby. He's also the model for Felis Catus on my Evolution of Life chart. I adopted Milo 10 years ago when he was 7, which means he is now 17, a nice ripe old age for a cat. He's still fairly healthy. His previous companion, Bobby, who joined him when I married my wife, lived to be 21, which just goes to show, if you take good care of your cat by keeping them indoors, feeding them well, and taking them to the vet for regular checkups, they can live a long, happy life. Anyway, Milo is a big cat. In fact, he used to be quite overweight. Fortunately, we were able to get that under control, but even so, he's still got a massive bone structure and is really long. However, the most notable thing about Milo is that he is a talker. I mean, he talks a lot. Hi, Milo. Hi. You ready for bed? Yeah? But you're on my side of the bed. Yeah, do you want to come over here on, on to your side of the bed? No? Milo? Yeah, you want to move? Can you move, please? Yeah, can you move over here? No? Move over here. Come on. You don't want to move? He is also extremely dedicated to me, and pretty much only me. He's friendly to everyone, but he's almost got this dog-like devotion to me, which is sometimes, to be honest, a little bit over the top. 
Three years ago, after Bobby died, my wife and I decided to rescue a pair of kittens through a local organization called Vokra. Milo therefore ended up with two new friends, Chuti and Quetzal, who are both three years old now. Let me tell you about Chuti first. First of all, the word Chuti means small and cute in Sinhalese, which is one of the languages spoken in Sri Lanka, where I used to live. To our surprise, Chuti really lived up to her name, because even though she's now full grown, she's still very small and cute. In fact, she still kind of looks like a kitten. She's also much more curious and playful than her brother. Have you ever heard the saying, curiosity killed the cat? Well, Chuti is that cat. She's fearless, but also extremely intelligent. For example, when you use a laser pointer, most cats chase the little red light. Chuti is the only cat I've known that instead looks directly at my hand and seems to be thinking, hey, that's cool that you're controlling that little light. Can I have a go at it? Chuti is also the only cat I've had that makes this weird brrrt sound every time she's taken by surprise or really, really happy. Finally, Chuti has one of those corkscrew tails that you sometimes see in cats. These can be due to genetics or sometimes trauma in the womb. We don't know which is the case for Chuti, but we do know that she sometimes has problems with balance and that her tail looks more like a bunny rabbit's. Okay, our third cat is Quetzal. The word Quetzal means kitten in Yiddish. Yiddish is a language spoken by Ashkenazi Jews. Quetzal and Chuti were littermates and are thus brother and sister. However, you'd never know it because these two cats are the complete opposites. Whereas Chuti is super brave and outgoing, Quetzal is the quintessential scaredy cat who runs under the bed every time the doorbell rings or when the vacuum cleaner is turned on. Quetzal and Chuti are also quite different in terms of their appearance. Although both are long-haired, Chuti is what you call a tuxedo cat, whereas Quetzal is a brown-gray tabby. Quetzal is also much bigger. He's a very strong, sturdy cat and has the ability to jump over five feet straight up in the air. But he's also the most cuddly of our three cats, if he's in the mood for it. He's the only one who likes belly rubs and often wants to crawl all the way up to my shoulder for a big hug. Okay, so those are our three cats. Let me now introduce you to Base Paws, which is a company that specializes in analyzing cat DNA. I was given free, for review purposes, their breed and health test. It comes with a swab which you have to rub against the inside of the cat's cheek for at least five seconds. I'll admit this was rather tricky and unfortunately I wasn't able to get any good footage of it because I did a rather terrible job and got each cat pretty upset with me. So instead here is a diagram that shows you how to properly hold a cat's head so that you can insert something into their mouth like a swab or a toothbrush. Okay, so once you get the DNA, make sure you register the number on the vial. This is very important, otherwise they won't know which cat the DNA belongs to. Then you simply return it to Base Paws and wait for about a month. They then send you a 36-page report that looks like this. Much of it is information about the various breeds they test for, as well as an explanation on how they make their determinations. But the two sections that are unique to your cat are the breed analysis and the health markers. Let's start with Milo's breed analysis, which was actually a bit of a surprise. Like I mentioned earlier, we had assumed that Milo was part Siamese due to his talkativeness and loyal nature. But according to his report, he has practically zero Eastern DNA. However, it turns out that he's almost one quarter Maine Coon, which probably means that one of his grandparents belonged to this breed, which actually makes a lot of sense. 
It certainly explains his large size. And from the report, I learned that Maine Coons are also known for being quite talkative. The rest of his DNA looks to be a mix of other Western breeds, such as the Siberian and American Shorthair. He appears to have no exotic, and only a very little Persian and Eastern. That last category you see, polycat, is just a fancy way of saying that that part of his DNA was so mixed and generic that it was impossible to attribute to a specific breed. Notice, though, that they actually give you a slider that allows you to look at the results in five different ways. If you want their best guess at how your cat's more ambiguous DNA could be classified, you can slide it over to maybe. When I do this for Milo, his main coon goes up to 28%, and all the other percentages go up as well, with the broadly category and polycat going down. However, if I want to eliminate as much guesswork as possible, I can slide it all the way over to confident. If I do that, a whopping 70% of his DNA becomes ambiguous, and the only thing that can be said for certain is that he is 16% Maine Coon, 6% American Shorthair, 5% Siberian, and 2% Ragdoll. So that's still pretty solid evidence that he likely had one Maine Coon grandparent. For the other two test results, I'm going to take a middle-of-the-road approach and keep the slider on probable. Let's look at Quetzal next. Compared to Milo, Quetzal has a bit more non-Western DNA, particularly in the Persian category, which makes sense considering that Quetzal is long-haired. However, he too has quite a bit of Maine Coon. Although Quetzal isn't as big as Milo, he's still a pretty sturdy guy. He also has quite a bit of ragdoll, which might explain why he likes to cuddle and show his belly. Let's now look at Chuti. I saved hers for last because her results are the most diverse of the three. I'd like to think that this is perhaps why she is so unique, both in terms of her size as well as her personality. As you can see, she has more Persian than her brother and quite a bit more exotic. She also has less Maine Coon and more Siberian. Siberians are known to be very brave and independent, which is certainly true of Chuti. Now, you might ask, if Quetzal and Chuti are brother and sister, why aren't their results more similar? Well, for one, it could be just the random nature of how DNA works. We all get 50% of our DNA from our mother and 50% from our father. And which 50% you get from each boils down to chance, which is why siblings can be so alike in some cases and why other times they can be extremely different. However, in cats, it is also relatively common for a female to be impregnated by two different males at the same time. So perhaps Chuti and Quetzal had the same mom, but two different dads. In addition to the breed analysis, base paws also tests for several genetic diseases. Thankfully, all three of my cats were clear on all of them. If you're interested in doing a DNA test for your own cat, base paws is offering a 15% discount for useful charts viewers. You can find a link in the pinned comment or in the description. All right, I hope you found all of this interesting, whether you're a cat owner or not. If you do have a cat, let us know in the comments what mixture of breeds you think your cat is. Thanks for watching.